Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Turn your Bibles to Revelation chapter 15. This is going to be part, part 14 of the FIRE series. Uh, after I finish this, I think what I'm going to do uh, after part 14 is probably have a part 15 where we're going to cover what happens during the thousand year reign of Christ. And um, usually I don't, I, I don't know, I don't mess with uh, things that really aren't going to affect what's going to happen to us sooner or later. But um, there's it ties into the fire series. So, all right, let's read chapter 15 of Revelation. Verse 1, And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. Boy, I hope they don't want me playing a harp. I can't play nothing. Uh, verse 3. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God. You want to hear the song of Moses? Let's take a look. All right, the uh, song of Moses is in Deuteronomy chapter 32. And you don't want me to sing it to you because, uh, well, the only way I can carry a tune is if somebody hands me a bucket. Uh, let's see. Yeah, when I was a kid, I actually had a decent voice, and then my voice changed. Eh, what can you do? Okay, verse 1, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 1. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as a small rain upon the tender herb and as the flowers and as the showers showers not flowers and as the showers upon the grass because i will publish the name of the lord ascribe ye greatness unto our god he is the rock now oh, i did a study on the rock he is the rock his work is perfect for all his ways are judgment a god of truth and without iniquity just and right is he they have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and crooked generation. Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people, and unwise? Is not he thy father that hath bought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee, thy elders, and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided the, to the nations their inheritance, and that word nations is sometimes, same word is sometimes translated as Gentiles. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated, separated, separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. You see, people, God wants his people separated. He doesn't want them all mixed together. That's okay. All right, so uh, verse 9. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about, he instructed him, he kept him as the apple of his eye, 
As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. Now, it's interesting that in verse 11, they, you know, talk about an eagle. Well, I think in Revelation 12, it talks about the, uh, the woman being taken on eagle's wings. You know, that's why you got to stick with the King James Bible, because the word associations will, let's say you read Revelation 12, where it talked about the woman being taken of an eagle's wings. And, you know, you'd look back on Deuteronomy chapter 32 and boom, verse 11, as an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings, so the Lord alone did lead them, and there was no strange God with him. He made him ride on the high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields, and he made him to suck honey out of the rock, and oil out of the flinty rock. Butter of kine, K-I-N-E, uh, that's an old English word for cattle, butter of kine and milk of sheep, with fat of lambs and rams of the breed of Bashan, and goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat, and thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. But Jezreel waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. The rock of his salvation. See, people... People will tell you that the Old Testament is just a book of laws and there was no grace in the Old Testament. Well, they're wrong. Genesis 3.15 uh, even tells that one day there would be a coming Redeemer. Then he forsook God which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that newly came up, whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them. Abhorred means to hate greatly. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provokings of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very froward generation, children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. For a fire, for a fire is kindled in mine anger and shall burn unto the lowest hell and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. You see, people, even in Deuteronomy, one of the oldest books in the Bible, it talks about the earth uh, being set on fire. I mean, really? You know, there's, there's a lot of prophecy in the Old Testament. People are idiots, and they don't bother to read it. For a fire is kindled mine anger, and shall burn unto the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. I will heap mischiefs upon them, I will send, spend mine arrows upon them. They shall be burnt with hunger, and devoured with burning heat, and with bitter, bitter destruction. 
And I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them with the poisons of serpents of the dust. The sword without and terror within shall destroy both the young man and the virgin, the suckling also with the man of gray hairs. I said I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. You see, it's only because God's enemies would take credit for this that, you know, God's going to change the situation and outcome somewhat. All right, so let's go back. Uh, let's go verse 28 now. That's the next one. For they are a nation void of counsel. Neither is there any understanding in them. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock had sold them and the Lord had shut them up? For their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Now, think about it. Didn't they give uh, Jesus on the cross a drink of vinegar with gall? Their grapes are grapes of gall, their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. An asp is a particularly nasty snake. And uh, if it gets injected into your skin, into your bloodstream, it's venom. If you take it by your mouth and you, you know, that's a poison. Uh, people use it interchangeably, but, you know, eh, sound like an English teacher, right? Verse 34, Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants when he seeth that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, Where are their gods, their rock in whom they trusted, which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings? Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. Oh, yeah. When you sacrifice to the devil and your day of trouble comes, pray to the devil to help you see what happens. Verse 39. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. If I wet my glittering sword and mine hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. God's going to reward those that hate him. Verse 42. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood, and my sword shall devour flesh, and that with the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants, and will render vengeance to his adversaries, and will be merciful unto his people, I mean, and be merciful unto his land and to his people. And Moses came and spake all the words of this song 
in the ears of the people, he and Hoshea, the son of Nun. And Moses made an end of speaking all these words to all Israel. And he said unto them, Set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which ye shall command your children to observe to do, all the words of this law. There you go, people. All right, back to Revelation 15, verse 3. And they sing the song, eh, let's start over. Verse 1. And I saw another sign in heaven, great marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. And after that I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. And the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues, clothed in pure and white linen, linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of God, who liveth, forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God. That's holy smoke, by the way. And from his power, and no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues, the seven angels, were fulfilled. All right, let's go to verse 16. Chapter 16, I'm sorry. Chapter 16, verse 1. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his uh, vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. Now I want to stop some, make a comment here. There are people that says that the um, there's a microchip that is powered with a type of lithium battery and it's powered by temperature. Now if they put lithium into a microchip and put it into your hand or forehead and it broke and the lithium got into your, oh, I don't know, into your skin. Somebody's uh, doctor said that it would cause a sore. Hmm. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men, which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. Now, I'm not saying for sure that uh, that's going to be the mark of the beast, because I don't know. I believe it's a very, very strong possibility. Um, I don't watch much TV, but... Sometimes I watch it just to see where they're herding the cattle. H-E-R-D, herding. But uh, if anybody remembers the name of this movie, let me know. Uh, there was a, I think it was a guy, it was some kind of government agent or a cop, police. And uh, some guy that was convicted of a crime was released. And he had some kind of a microchip in his hand. And the government had a way that they could tell the chip to break in their body. And in the microchip was a, a poison or a venom, I should say. I don't know. It, was, it would kill them. And the cop found out that the guy was either innocent or was doing the right thing or something or other. But uh, he went into the complex where they were getting ready to 
kill this guy. And the policemen destroyed the equipment so that they couldn't do that. I don't remember what the movie was. I never watched the whole movie. I just saw, you know, you go to people's houses and you see bits and pieces of things because they're watching, they're consumed watching television and movies. But, um, yeah, if anybody remembers that, it was probably 20 years ago. Maybe it was the 80s. I don't remember. But uh, I thought, wow, microchip in the hand. I don't know if I was a... That might even been been before I was a believer. I think it was. I think it was in the 80s, or maybe early, mid-80s, late 80s. I'm not sure. So if anybody knows the name of that movie that I'm talking about, please let me know. I'd like to take a look at it again. Verse 3, Revelation 16, 3. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. You know, people, I was living in Melbourne, and I remember it was, I don't remember the exact time of the year, but it was in the early 70s, maybe 71, 72, 73, I don't remember. But I actually saw red tide. The ocean was actually red, and all the fish died. I mean, it stuff's nasty. Just the waves, the wind carrying the, the stuff from the waves, getting in your eyes burned. I didn't dare go in the water. It's, it was nasty. Um, so, I don't know. Red tide would seem to match this. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man. And every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. Oh, and if you don't know what red tide is, it is a type of algae. Very, very toxic. Verse 6. And I heard the angel of the water say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous, are thy judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with dun, 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 fire. Oh, yeah. He's going to scorch men with fire. Verse 9, And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. Can you imagine that? Blaspheming the name of God, and they didn't repent to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. All right, let's skip over to, uh, let's see, Revelation chapter 2, real quick. Verse 12. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. Huh, boy, that's, uh, that's, that would be a rough neighborhood, huh? Pergamos. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. Oh, yeah, Pergamos. Do you know where that is? It's in a country today that they call Turkey. Turkey used to be called Greece till the, uh, until the Muslims invaded it and killed the great majority of the Christians. So, uh, let's see. All right, back to Revelation 16, 
Verse 10. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seed of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. They didn't repent of their deeds, not their unbelief, their deeds. Verse 12. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the great world to gather them to the battle of the that great day of God Almighty. So these spirits of these devils are going to be doing miracles. And trust me, people are going to be deceived. Verse 15, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments. What garments? His wedding garments, right? I think so. I mean, I could be wrong, but... Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. And uh, I think this is a kind of a, you know... Be, them being able to see your sin because you have no covering for it. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Now I want to make a, a point here. If the New Testament was written in Hebrew, then he wouldn't have to say, and he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. They would have just said Armageddon. They wouldn't say in a place called in the Hebrew tongue. No, because it was written in Greek. That's why they had to say, you know, the New Testament was written in Greek. That's why he says, and he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. You know, it's giving you the translation from Greek to Hebrew. And if it was written in Hebrew, this verse would have been un necessary. So when people try to convince you that the Old Te the New Testament was written in Hebrew and mistranslated into Greek, wrong, they're liars. 17. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake, and so great. Remember, we in the previous studies, we talked about a whole lot of shaking going on? Well, there you go. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came a remembrance before God to give unto her unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away. Uh, I, I don't think I'd want to be living in Hawaii. What do you think? And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. Now, depending upon who you live, listen to, uh, a talent weighed anywhere from uh, 20 to 40 kilograms. So you're talking, uh, well, or 20 to 40, maybe 50 kilograms. So typically from about 35, 40 to 100 pounds 
All I know is you get hit in the head with uh, something that weighs about 30 pounds, uh, you better get out the bare aspirin because you're going to need it. Oh, yeah. All right, chapter 17, Revelation, verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the, in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit with a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Now, uh, horns in the Bible usually are representative of kings or government, you know, authority, rulers, generally. That's what, when they talk about horns, that's generally what they're uh, talking about. Uh, okay, verse 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. Now, purple is uh, the color of royalty. Uh, there were times in Europe that if a commoner was caught wearing purple, he would have been executed because purple denoted royalty. It's funny, is purple was my favorite color growing up as a kid. I don't know. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Now, remember, we're talking about Mystery Babylon the Great, right? In Revelation. Now, in the Old Testament, northern Israel was carried off into captivity by the Assyrians. Southern Judah and Jerusalem was carried off into captivity by Babylon. King Nebuchadnezzar. And uh, Jeremiah records this. The book of Daniel records this. So, what is this golden cup in her hand of the whore that we just read about? Well, let's take a look in Jeremiah chapter 51, starting in verse 5. Jeremiah 51 and verse 5. Now, Jeremiah talks about Babylon. For Israel hath not been forsaken, nor Judah of his God, of the Lord of hosts, though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. Well, now you know why uh, God let them be carried away, because their land was full of sin. Verse 6. Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity. For this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. Listen carefully. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore... The nations are mad. Not angry mad, but insane, crazy. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. Howl for her. Take balm for her pain. If so be, she may be healed. I don't think so. All right, let's go back. Now let's go back to Revelation 17, verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk, drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away into the, in the spirit, into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns, 
And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. There is a holy, and I don't say H-O-L-Y, W-H-O-L-Y. Uh, uh, there's a book that the um, those that call themselves Jews read Revelation 2.9, but uh, they have a book on a commentary of the Bible, and they call it the Talmud. Matter of fact, the entire name is the Babylonian Talmud. The word Talmud means learning. So basically, it's Babylonian learning or learning from Babylon. You can go to Amazon and order it. Of course, it's, a, it's like an encyclopedia. It's a multi-volume set. The opinions of rabbis, Jesus condemned it in his day as the tradition of of the elders and uh, Martin Luther and a few other people burned it because of the blasphemies against Christ uh, but you know what what's interesting is that uh, those people today that call themselves Zionists and they say well you know we got to bless we got to bless them well in these in their the Babylonian Talmud, they curse Jesus and Christians. Now, a lot of people that go to a building that they call a church on Sunday where they learn this kind of stuff, uh, and these people that read this Babylonian book, they deny Jesus as the Christ. The Bible defines them as antichrists. But in 2 John chapter 1 and verse 10, John says, If there come not any unto you, and bring not this doctrine. What doctrine? The doctrine of Christ. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. For he that biddeth him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. Bidding somebody Godspeed is the same thing as saying, God bless you. Are you going to bless those that are antichrist? Are you going to bless those that hate Jesus? For he that biddeth him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. These people that are Zionists uh, on Judgment Day, they're going to be surprised. Shocked is probably more the word. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that, which, uh, that carried her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. Perdition means to fall. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Do you know that there's peoples, there are people living whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Uh, their names were not written in the book of life. Think about that. Are there people that were born who were never, never had a chance of salvation? I don't know. Uh, you know, I can only 
show you what the Bible says. When they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. And here is the mind that hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Now, for those of you that don't know it, Seattle, Microsoft, sits on seven hills. From what I understand, Washington, D.C. sits on seven hills. Moscow, communism, sits on seven hills. Um, let's see, what else? Istanbul, capital of Turkey, seven hills. Of course, though, they're quick to point out that Rome, the Vatican, sits on seven hills. But there's also one other place, and that is Jerusalem, also is on seven hills. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, he is, I'm sorry, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. And the seven horns which thou sawest are seven, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and the ten horns, and the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings. Remember I told you horns are tied in with kings and rulers? And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. So those that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Those are going to be the true chosen people. Verse 15. And he saith unto me, The waters, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Don't you just love it? You always see the, uh, when they're, selling a book on Revelation and talks about the beast coming out of the sea. And they always got a dragon with a woman sitting on its head coming out of the ocean. Wrong. That's what this imagery is supposed, is designed to do, is to throw your mind off. The Bible here says, The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples, people and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, thee shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate, and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the king's of the earth. Oh yeah. And a lot of people will tell you, oh well this is going to be Rome. Mm, I don't think so, but you know, everybody's titled to their own opinion, right? All right, let's go to Revelation 18 verse 1. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power and the earth was lighted with his glory, and he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. Why did they say that twice? Well, Babylon, the original Babylon, physical Babylon fell. Now, spiritual Babylon is fallen, right? Now, that's kind of how I, that's, that's my take on it. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean 
and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxen rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her, even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works, in the cup which she hath uh, filled, fill to her double. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. Boy, there sure is a lot of fire in the Old Te uh, New Testament, in Revelation, huh? And she shall be utterly burned with fire. I wonder if it's going to be nuke, nuked. I don't know. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her, and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And all the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth her merchandise any more. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all vine wood and all manner vessels of ivory, and all manner vessels of most precious wood, and of brass, and iron, and marble, and cinnamon, and odors, and ointments, and frankincense, and wine, and oil, and fine flour, and wheat, and beasts, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves, and souls, souls of men. And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. Now, people, you don't know it, but all the things, the merchandise and the, the ointments and all this stuff, are all things used in temple worship. Read it. Book of Leviticus. Read it. I'm not making this stuff up. All this stuff is used in temple worship. Uh, verse 14, And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city which was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, for in one hour so great riches has come to naught. And every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off. Now, because of this verse, a lot of people will say, oh yeah, it's got to be uh, uh, Babylon, Mystery Babylon is by the sea. But it doesn't say it's by the sea. It just says that those that are by the sea stood afar off. And they cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? Well, you know what? You can see a, the smoke from a nuclear blast uh, many, many, many miles. Many miles. All right, somebody uh, says that a mushroom cloud from a nuclear explosion can... Uh, will be approximately 60,000 60, feet or 1,800 meters. I'm sorry, 18,000 meters high. Uh, so they say uh, 
you should be able to see about, I don't know, well over 200 and something miles. Some people say uh, 300 miles. You could see the mushroom cloud from a burning. So, all right. So, um, Revelation 18, 18. And they cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour is she made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets. For God hath avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a giant, uh, like a great millstone, and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers, and musicians, and of pipers and trumpeters, shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee, and the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries, sorceries were all nations deceived, and in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Bingo. There's your, there's your uh, thing right there. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Who killed the prophets? Matthew 23, 37, Jesus speaking. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets. Who killed the prophets? Jerusalem. And stonest them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Luke 13, 34. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killest the prophets, and stonest them that are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, as a hen doth gather her brood under her wings, and ye would not. Now, if you don't know it, a Pharisee, according to the Jewish Encyclopedia, is a group or a sect of Jews. Let's go to Matthew chapter 23 and read verse 29 on. Words of Christ, Jesus speaking here. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchers of the righteousness and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers, ye serpents, ye generations of vipers. How can ye escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify and some of them ye shall scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel. Who killed Abel? From the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zechariah, son of Barchias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. 
Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stoneth them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as the hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. All right, let's uh, do Revelation chapter 19. And after this, um, I'm going to close out, uh, well, this part of the Bible study. But uh, I'm going to cover the millennium, the thousand-year reign of Christ. Uh, there are some interesting questions there. All right, Revelation 19, verse 1. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and the voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord, Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he said unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written with that no man knew but he himself, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Uh, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. You see, people, they're gathering in Jerusalem to fight against the coming of our king. That's, that's why, you know, <laughs> that's what they're doing. They're gathering. Uh, the Canaanites are gathering in the land, just like they did when... Moses led Israel out of the promised land and, and ran in, went into the land of Canaan. What they find there? The Canaanites, who went there in advance of Israel to oppose them. 
Well, that's what's happening and going to happen again. That's what's happening now. The Canaanites are gathering in the promised land to uh, gather themselves to make war against him. Verse 20, And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet, that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, with which, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Oh yeah, that's going to be a glorious day. All right, well, that's going to be the end of this part of the Bible study. Uh, when I continue next, we're going to cover the millennium. So, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. And people, uh, if the two boots me off, look for me on uh, Bright Eon. I'll, I'll leave a message on Bright Eon. Uh, my channel's called Christian Bible Studies. I'll leave you, uh, I'll let you know there where I'm going to be. And I got a book I'm writing or going to write when I get booted off YouTube. I'm honestly, I'm surprised I've, you know, I've been on here for all, almost 10 years. I'm surprised I'm still on here. I mean, I'm banned on Facebook. I'm banned on Twitter. Um, Sermon Audio, a so-called Christian Bible study website. Uh, they got every heretic in the world on that site, but uh, they told me that I was not a good fit and they deleted all my studies. Yeah. And I wrote back the uh, owner of the site. I said, may the Lord judge between me and thee. Yeah. So, all right. Take care.